I'm not hearing what you're hearing. I can't hear anything. Oh, well, that's silly. Do you want me to play it on my end and see if that works? Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. You play it then. I'll try that. Good. This Start is the recording the on the jigsaw project because I just pressed record, mm. and you've agreed to help with the creative process of getting, like, birthing this project because at the moment it's a very, it's a very abstract stage, but it's it's an important project to me, and I need help to midwife it into existence. It's the story of a jigsaw, a jigsaw puzzle. As a metaphor for trauma, and the jigsaw puzzle is a, a cutout. It's made of wood. A cutout of my hand, jigsawed into thirteen pieces, and the thirteen pieces have been lost. And I've got about six of them, and this is the final finger. I know where one other finger is. It's with Kelly Frost in Pontadawi. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as I know with the clues of it. Now, it's not, strictly speaking, important to bring the, the physical jigsaw puzzle back to life. It's not an exercise in collecting physical bits of the puzzle. The exercise is understanding the nature of trauma and designing a narrative vehicle that can successfully help to de-traumatise people without traumatising them for in the first place, if possible. To discuss trauma without being traumatic is the mission. Without repeating one trauma with another. That's right. Yeah. So the, the most would be allowed is like a... 30 second very high speed flash of a guy going through a whole load of very peak experiences as a result of having been traumatised. So the, the, it'll be very dense and very fast, but it'll be like, this is all the trauma, but it'll be so far removed from the audience that it won't be effective. And it'll be like, <coughs> this happened, and then... This is how we solved it. A bit like what 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 I see you describing is a bit like how people describe um, death moments, where uh, there's a kind of flashback of pivotal moments in their life. Exactly. Um, exactly that. Uh, spanning time, and then uh, and then there's the the. Rebirth of the pro there's a breaking out of the chrysalis into whatever comes after. Mm. Beautifully put. So, th so that's the job is coming out with statements like that as a result of the statement that I've just made. Like it, that's beautiful. Mm. The jigsaw puzzle is the is the chrysalis. <coughs> the jigsaw puzzle is complete. The trauma is done, and it's just the jigsaw puzzle. It loses its symbolic representation because it's whole. But each individual piece is like has a massive amount of density and weight and archetypal gravity. And we'll start with the fingers and the thumb. The thumb is the first, and it represents luck because of hitchhiking. When you stick a thumb out, you're invoking luck. And you hope for a synchronistic meeting that will take you where you need to go. There's the end. Anyway. I'll identify the, the fingers and I name them, and then you'll know how the. Because the difficult bit is all of this stuff. It's like the, the palmistry is. <laughs> Parts, 
I'll show you what I've got left of the jigsaw. I'll just get it. So it comes in a box. It's inherited in a box. This is the actual box, but the prop inside it is a prop jigsaw. I'll, I'll make a new one for the project. You've got this. You've got this. Are you still there? From here, I'm just uh, looking at these jigsaw pieces. Okay, cool. I like that the technology's working for us. I've got a new uh, laptop now, so. So that's this yeah, bit. No, I, here. It looks like a giant finger now. Yeah. <laughs> that's the karate chop bit, that's right. And this is the final bit I've got. And do those bits fit together? Well, they do. I can put it together. <coughs> Come to this in case, um, and I've got a candle that's the Scrabble letter T. I've got the title for the movie. Got some stamps from Sussex, and I've got this. Mm. And, and this. Okay. And, and, and the box, inside of the box, is a mirror. Yes. So that, that's... Oh, and another thing. It's not, it's not fixed at the minute, but it'll have a button on the side. And the button is interactive. The button knows when it's been pressed and it interacts with something outside of itself, like a, a machine. It reminds me of a pinhole camera. It, it will also have a pinhole camera. I, that's a great idea that you thought of and added. So I'll try and put the puzzle together uh, while we chat. And while I do it, maybe just have thoughts and say them. Okay, so what I was thinking, um, as you were describing the 13 parts, I was thinking, okay, um, got the, but it reminded me of palmistry and the parts being divided into the lines of the hand. Yeah. And so you, sh you, you showed me the, uh, is it the Mount of Venus, which is the thumb? This bit. The puffy, the puffy bit on the thumb here. Right. And then you've got track travel line and you've got lifeline and you've got love line and you've got yeah. headline and you've got um destiny line and um and the this bit this bit is something mm. yeah, I can't, I, i'm not an expert well but that perfectly illustrate because I, I i only know the names of the fingers i didn't know until you told me that what the name of these bits are. These bits have been a complete fucking mystery. And I one wedding ring finger going, well, I'm not getting married, so I don't know what this bit does. Look at it. Look at it now. Right. Uh, so, this, that's there. Very interesting puzzle. <laughs> okay, that fits. There we go. Now I've got two bits, and I don't know how they go together. And they, but they do go together. So that's the bit that connects to the thumb. I don't have a thumb. I've got. I've 
Ja, dat zijn mensen daar de vijf van los, hè? Ja, die staat te vergaan, dat kan niet zo. Maar ik ga eens wat daar, eens wat daar. So anyway, I'll make another. Now that we know what we're doing here, I'll make another puzzle piece. I'll make another jigsaw puzzle with my hand. I'll go to the workshop. Same way as B's got to find a way of cutting a circle in a triangular piece of wood. I've got to go away and find the, the workshop where I can cut this thing together. Yeah. Um. Oh, the mirror just fell out. Sorry? Hello. It'll be made out of I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back Sorry. to the uh, it's outside. Daily 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 Sorry. That was a, another video coming on. Uh, apologies. Ah. <laughs> and it'll be quite intricately carved. Each piece will be carved with what it is. So you mentioned, for example, one of the things you mentioned was the mound of Venus, and you mentioned the word destiny. The Venus mound is, I would imagine that that piece of the, the hand refers to the archetype of like sexual energy, because of the mound of Venus, and what that means. But what I'm interested in discussing at the moment is that... Uh, Again, but destiny, like the concept of destiny. That's enough for now. Okay, I have some thoughts. Good. So basically, um, the way I, I see it is that like we progressed as um, a species simply because we have posable thumbs, and we we do more or less everything with our hands. So we've built this entire sort of well, fake world, and and sort of separated ourselves from the animal kingdom because we can use our hands. So in a way, you know, it's it's where our strength is, isn't it? Right. What makes us superior? Well, obviously, in our brains. So I guess like not having your hands in a way is it's taking away your ability to function. More so than anything else, you know. Yeah, I do know. But then it's it's stunting your it's it's stunting your ability to do to do things because the the will or the power is there because you your your brain working but your hands aren't um aren't there because you need to piece them together. Yeah. First, and right. I guess in a way that's kind of symbolic for trauma because it does um hold you back mm, of course it can, make, it can strip you of that ability to to do things you know to function as a higher mammal yeah yeah that's deep yeah so thanks each piece of this um jigsaw mm. is going to be um is it going to have, like, specific memories attached, or is it going to be, like... We're, we're thinking of it as, like, characters attached, archetypes. Oh, okay. So, the pinky finger represents my sister, because she's got pink hair and is known as Pinky. The, yeah. the index finger, the pointing finger, is uh, direction... The, the thumb is luck for hitchhiking and thumbs up. Yeah. The ring finger is the 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 ring. It's got a ring on it, and it's the only finger that I've got left in my possession at the moment. That's the one you see in the video. Yeah. And that's for the wedding. So I do, I do, I do intend to get married in my life at some point to someone. Okay. Someone that I'm compatible with. Yeah. Um, and then the the middle finger is the one that Kelly Frost has got. And it's a joke, giving someone the finger. It's a joke. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. 
so Kelly Frost in Pontadawi, remember you dropped me off and I gave her that finger? Oh, uh, yeah. On, on that day? Yeah. But but really, you could make friends with Kelly and uh, get it for your own collection? Because she's, she's just holding it in the shop for somebody to come along and collect it, as, as if it was a treasure hunt. Oh, okay. So that would be a nice thing to document. Yeah, I Yeah. So it's an episodic film set in reality about a jigsaw and the making of the jigsaw and what happened and various things. Made by um, some sort of magical being. Made by me. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a wizard. A wizard made it. Yeah. And then forgot that he was a wizard. So what happens when the pieces are put together? The trauma is complete and he's healed. So he has to find the pieces, and it's really difficult to find lost things if they're so well scattered. Yeah. I mean, I literally don't know where the pieces are. It would be impossible to put the jigsaw that I've got back together. So I'm going to have to make a new jigsaw for the film. Oh, okay. You see? Yeah. It's, it's how I got the idea. I made a jigsaw first, and then I learnt about it and understood what it means over the last decade. It was buried on Tom Morris's land, and somebody dug it up and found it, and then I found their house in Swansea. Do you know Hattie Hendra? Yeah, yeah, I know Hattie. Yeah, she found it. She dug it up. She dug up that hand. Oh, did she? Yeah, and she had it in her living room, and then I turned up at her house years later. Yeah. And basically nicked it off her. <laughs> I, said, I said, oh, great, I'll have that back. And I owe you one. You know, I owe you a hand because she won the prize. Yeah. And that was the prize. But now it's all destroyed, so I can't give it back to her. So I've got to make another one. Mm. But that was easy to do. It's, it's basically a couple of hours' work with the right tool. Yeah. And it cost 250 quid for the tool, so I, I could just save up for it. Oh, and it. You don't have tool anymore. No, I, I gave it to my dad. In France, I put it in a crate and uh, carried it to France. Very heavy tool. Yeah. Um, never <coughs> mind. Yeah, I saw my, I saw um Hattie out um not last week, the week before in um a funk gig. Oh, funk! <laughs> that sounds like her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, how is she? Is she funky? Yeah, yeah. She um, and Bob, he's big now. Uh, how how old's Bob? Do you reckon? Ten or eleven, or possibly. Same age as um, I reckon he's eleven at least. And how old's Corin? Because I haven't seen Corin for years. Um, he'd be six now. Oh the, Jesus! Uh, Time does fly, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm really glad you came up to visit, and I think you should do it more often. I know, I'm trying, and the thing yeah. is, you know, I'm just, I'm getting stuck inside my head a little bit. Yeah. I get trapped in the house, and then I start doing my, like, um, creative things, and then, I don't know. And then days go by. I know what it, I know what it's like, but. Yeah. It's a bit hard, you know, when I've got the baby, because he's uh, getting to the difficult age. Now. Yeah, I know. And getting him into the car, bundling him off on a whim, on a whim is very tricky. I know. Like yeah, I know. But but you did well to come last time, and treat me treat me as a friend and a neighbour that you need to visit regular because otherwise, like we'll just suffer in silence alone, and that's not fair. Yeah. You know yeah, why why maybe. why put each other and ourselves through that when we could just be basically best Swansea friends. Like, the tower rejoining itself. What, me and you? Yeah, we could just be friends. Like, on the river, up uh, up and down it. You could be the bottom end, I'll be the top end. All right, then. And as long as we swim up and down like salmon and meet each other regular, everything is good in the world. And if we start oh, isolating... <laughs> huh? We need to get driving again. I need to get a car. Yeah. 
It's as simple as that. It'll cost me 500 quid and a thousand pounds in insurance. So I've got to have my credit rating, which I'm working on. Uh, yeah. Not without a car, I can. And my mum says she's not going to buy me another one. Yeah, that's understandable. I know. I, I threw away the opportunity. It was great. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. Yeah. What happened to it anyway? Uh, well, it's probably got crushed by now. Mm. It got stolen by the government. Stolen? Yeah. Well, I turned up and my car was gone and I was like, it's been nicked. I went to the police and they were like, oh yeah, it's in an impound in fucking Mercer Tidville. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh well. I do miss it. Caris, her name was. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find that you'll be fine the moment you get into a car again. Oh, I'll be fine. And what I'll do is I'll save up and I'll get a, v, a VW little van, like my mum's got, one of the caddies, and I'll live yeah. in it. I'll basically be free. I'll be able to go anywhere in the country, if not the world. I'm not going to drive to Thailand, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, a European citizen with a passport and a you're fucking licence. Like river friend. Yeah, we're river friends, so... I'll come to Swansea as soon as I can and, and come to St. Thomas and chill out with you in your garden. I don't live in St. Thomas. Where's, where Landor. do you live? Where do you live then? Landor. <laughs> Is that not St. Thomas? Very close to St. Thomas. Oh, well, don't be so fucking pedantic then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did my best. I came. I, I had to go the wrong way up a one-way street to meet you in, in the car. So I think St. Thomas, like if I can get to Morriston, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so we'll see what happens next week. I don't know. I've still got a visitor, so, I'm, you know, I could come, but I probably won't, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, just being realistic, it'll be next week. Okay. Yeah, oh. I'm owed 60 quid, so I'll be able to get, like, a taxi from town sort of problem. Well, I could, I was thinking, because, you know, it might be easier if you, well, because you could stay a bit longer, you see, and then I could cook for us, and you could even stay, stay here. Okay, well, that's uh, nice of you. Well, Do you have I cats? Think, Pardon? Do you have cats? No. All right, that'll be fine then. You're allergic. I'm yeah. a bit allergic to cats. It's difficult. Yeah, no, um, I, I don't have a cat anymore. I did. Have okay, a cat. I'm not that allergic. It won't be a problem. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I need like a blow up bed because I have one, and then I'm sure it's got a hole in it or something. But, um, Do you have a sofa? Is it long? My sofa's pretty long. Yeah, I'll sleep on your sofa. Don't worry. Okay. I'll be, I'll be comfy. As long as we wind down properly, I'll be fine. I'll take my promethazine with me. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Well, that's that's a date. Sometime in the next week or two at the most. Yeah. And we'll I keep in touch in the meantime, have regular conversations whenever we can in the evening when the kids are in bed. Yes, yeah. That's, and, and then, because like, I'm really interested in your sci-fi ideas. I'm interested in your, in your development, your books. I'm interested in helping you get published properly and this, that and the other. And we can talk about it. I've lost like, the momentum. I yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. Just drop it and concentrate on getting your, your psyche back to normal after basically working so hard on psychopathy that you've basically turned inside out. I know, I know, I, I have edited the book, it's like half edited. Yeah, let me read it in its current state, don't be shy, and, and I'll um, maybe help you edit it. All right, okay. Because I can just go through it and n not be nitpicky, but just like punctuation, capitalisation, spacebar, uh, underlining things that could, could maybe um, be expressed in a more grammatically correct fashion if necessary depending on what you want mm. like what level of editing you require sort of thing i won't go in and completely change the structure but i might make suggestions if it really if anything becomes obvious 
to me that I could suggest, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a pleasure. Okay. Whew. Good, good, good. Yes. Okay, then. I won't do it tonight, though. No. <laughs> I've got to go to sleep. Okay. Oh, it's lovely yeah. as ever. I do feel like, um, you know, I, I, you're helping in lots of ways because you're sort of pointing me in the direction I need to be in without me getting too lost down there. Yeah. Thinking about like, just really random things that happened like 18 years ago and... Yeah, we've known each other for a really long time in in a you know a trusting relationship. We've been on adventures together. We've been in love. It got tragic. Time passed. You've got kids. Everything's cool, and I understand your mind. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm interested in how you think, hmm. and so I've got an interest in your emotional state, like being level and good and pleasant for you to live with, you know? You've got to be able to live with what you're thinking of. Okay. And, and writing this book that you've written, I mean, well done. That's a really difficult thing to do. Yeah. And so give yourself credit that what you've done is, like, very difficult. And don't... Don't think you've got to keep going editing like to the final fucking full stop, otherwise you failed or that sort of thing. Like you've finished it basically. Yeah. You're not an editor, you're a writer. It's a different set of skills. Yeah. You shouldn't have to edit your own work once you've finished the, the actual narrative. And, uh, yeah, but the, I need to be able to put it through a program I use called Pro Writing Aid. Yeah. Pick flags up all the grammatical areas. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it and I'll do that organically, okay? You can do you can run it through an algorithm as well, but I'll I'll do it organically. You need to do both. Yeah, I realise. Uh, I, I just want to read it, first of all, and, and then tell you what I think. Okay. And then we'll see about... Because I've not done a professional editing job yet, and I would consider this to be a professional editing job. Okay. I hope you get published, you know? Pro properly yeah. paid ad an advance for the manuscript level. Yeah. Because that's, it's your second book. Like, by rights, you should expect that. Yeah. And it's intensely marketable. You you could be on Oprah Winfrey with this shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm intending on going in uh, with a, a sort of pseudo name kind of thing. You have to with this one, I'm afraid. I uh, know, with this one, I definitely yeah. do. It would be dangerous not to. Yeah. And I think Swansea will respect you well enough not to blow your cover, because, fuck. Yeah. Let's not go for superstar, then, but you do need to be published and paid. You've done the work. Yeah. Well, I did make money off my other book. How did that go, then? Um, it's still going. Yeah. It's my friend bought it. Tara bought it. Oh, did she? Yeah. What did she think? Well, she loves it. That like she met you and then she bought your book. So like, ah. it's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I thought it was really effective. It's a bit of a mad book. But it's a mad book, but it's a first book, and it demonstrates a lot of skill in, like. There's imagination, but then there's like the specifics of scientific, like what you're putting down on the page, you're putting it down for a reason. Yeah. And it covers that. Like it demonstrates a lot of stuff. You're a unique voice and should be treasured by people that like books. Yeah. 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 So, I think you know. That, um, it's sort of like with your first novel. You need to write a book to know how to write a book. Yeah, like, your first your first novel is almost just practice, and then and it, then you'd it, write your first book. It is um, the trial error kind of thing. Yeah, and it, I think it was successful. There's things that if I was the editor, I would have suggested as far as structural issues and a few. Uh, issues where you're kind of covering the same ground a couple of chapters away from each other and it's like maybe we could tr trim it or 
shift in a sideways direction. But it was... That's just personal opinion. Like, that's not like, oh, I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it when I when I finally read it because I tried to read it as soon as I got it. And I just... Because I felt like you were reading it to me in, in my head. <laughs> you know, like a little pixie version of you in my brain. And that was distracting me, so I couldn't get into it properly. <coughs> and now it's no fault of the writing. That's just because I know you personally and you wrote it. Yes. And then, so w w once you were like, yeah, but yeah, what do you actually think? I'm like, well, shit, I haven't finished it. <laughs> That's embarrassing. And I don't want her to think that I just got bored of it and t tailed off. It was like I just couldn't, at that time, concentrate properly on reading. Uh, so then I read it in a day. It was abs I absolutely devoured it. It was glorious. So don't worry. You're, you're competent, and it's a matter of getting it to sh be like perfect. That's the the editing is like every single detail that needs to be how you really intend it. Anyway. I kind of need to go because I need to pee. Yeah, okay, understood. Um, yeah, I'll come. Re remind me in the morning that I've committed to a, um early afternoon sometime next week. Okay. All right. All right, then. Thanks, love. See okay, you later. Okay, you sleep well. I'll do my best. Okay, bye-bye.